Okay guys, I'm not actually here to be some kind of an international spy or anything. <laughs> but I'm also not here to be your waiter, okay? I am not a waiter and I am also not a um, person who is playing in a band. <laughs> yes, I am a Filipino. But, uh, I'm not playing in a band. Okay, that is not my my day job. Can you do Hotel California? <laughs> I probably could do that, but um, I did not rehearse. So that's not my day. Anyway, so getting getting on with the show. Um, I've been here in Singapore for like well since 2000, um, October of 2000. So I've pretty much been here very, for quite a long time. I was away for like three years, but still, you know, the whole six years got me so immersed in how it is, what it is to be in Singapore. And so I remember the first time I actually came here. It was not when I came here in 2000. It was when I first came here for training back in 1997. And I think that's the same thing that a lot of the new, the people who are not originally from Singapore um, actually came, you know, um, ended up um, going through. Like, who here, who here are the expats? Uh, I'm pretty sure there's a lot of them here. There's a lot of expats here, and there's one thing that we all have in common. First time we came to Singapore, we had to deal with something really big. Singlish. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, you know, think about it. Think about this, this scene here. You got an Australian guy, goes to the bar. Hey there, Mike. Uh, give me a can of Tiger Beer, please. Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, can cannot bottle can. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. <laughs> there's the other. There's the other story about this English guy, who was actually he was he was supposed to meet up with a friend over in um, in Clark Key. He was on the other side of Clark Key. The one where you have, uh, was that Brew Works or something? So you've got Jumbo nearby, right? And so he saw his office mate there. His office mate is Singaporean. His name is Bang Huat. And uh, so the, the, the British guy sees, sees his friend eating something there, and he had this bib with uh, obviously bits of food, and it was colored brownish, orange, you know. It didn't really look very wholesome, but... Anyway, the guy said, Hey there, Bing Wat. Nice to see you here. Hey, what's that you're eating? Then Bing Wat then goes, oh, I'm eating crap. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what did you say? I'm eating crap. Eating chili crap. The guy was actually thinking, you mean there's chili flavored crap? <laughs> he was actually saying crab, of course. So, I mean, you have those little things, you know. Um, you've also got something that really did happen to me, personally, and this is not a story about some other people, but this is what happened to me. On that same, that same trip, when I was here for training, um, we, we were here for like a month and a half, okay? And nobody gives visas, you know, uh, social visit passes, for a month and a half or two months. You, you get in with 30 days, right? Back then, the company that I joined said, Look, we're so much in a hurry, we don't want to have to go through all the, the paperwork of having a training pass, you know, for, for, a, for a month and a half. We'll just fly you there for 30 days and then you go, go to JB and then come back, finish, the, you know, your, your training course. So we did that. So, we, so by, by the end of the, the first 30 days, our training coordinator came to us in class and said, uh, Okay, uh, everyone now. Uh, um, Tomorrow, huh? Tomorrow is Saturday, huh? So Saturday is our rest day, huh? So tomorrow we go over to JB. We go to JB so that uh, you buy whatever you want, get a very cheap haircut. Then we come back, then you get another 14 days, can? So, and then, um, and then, he, then he added and said, Oh, uh, by the way, I almost forgot. Uh, tomorrow, huh? must bring your passport and your etiquette. Okay, so, so I was sitting with this Indian guy and the Indian guy was just like, what, what exactly was he saying? And he said, he actually raised his hand and said, uh, 
excuse me, do you mean to say that we are going to have to be extremely polite? <laughs> Etiquette. They actually meant air ticket. That thing was for you. This other thing that happened a few months ago. Clap, clap, please clap. Another thing happened like a few months ago. Um, I was actually with, hanging out with some friends and um, there was this friend who, well, secretly, call him Mr. Abeng, <laughs> and uh, another girl who was actually, she's from Malaysia. And of course, they speak pretty much with the same accent, but you know, hers was a bit more refined, so no, no problem there. Anyway, we were over at Changi Village having some nasi lemak, as uh, Dominic was saying, and um, later on, this Malaysian girl said, yeah, so uh, what do we do next, huh? And then, oops, what do we do next, huh? <coughs> then the, um, then this Mr. Abeng says, uh, next one now, we are going to F you. <laughs> she was shocked. Huh? What are you going to do to me? No, we're not going to do anything. We're just going to F you. <laughs> what, what do you mean by F you? F you is the name of the place here. You know, Changi, there's a... Place where all the airplane go, huh? just very near there. There's a place we can we can hang out. Oh, you mean airfield? <laughs> airfield sounded really kinky, right? Anyway, so that's the that's the funny thing. Here in Sing Singlish, you gotta you gotta know what it's all about. You gotta make sure you know the grammar. It's not about saying you know, excuse me, sir, where's the toilet? You, you're gonna get this. Say this again. Excuse me, sir, where's the toilet? Huh? Funny. You're gonna have to say. Tolera, where? <laughs> Tolera, where? You gotta also know that there's a little bit of a zigzag pattern with how you speak. It's a up, down, up, down. Oh, no, 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 no. I think it's very important to do this thing. I think you need to do that already. Uh. I don't know why it's like that. Uh. It's definitely not boring. Anyway, so um, before I actually end, because time is pretty much almost up, um, I just wanted to just wanted to ask you: Did you notice that there were actually two kinds of Singaporeans, two kinds of Singaporean speech? That is, okay. There is the up and the down. I mean, when I say down, I'm talking about the cab drivers, hawker center types, and up there are the corporate types. Down there, I mean, I'm not being classist or anything. But they kind of speak with a very high-pitched voice. I don't know why, but normally they're the types to say, Hey, uh, uh, what you want, uh, chicken rice. Uh. <laughs> and then the guys on the corporate side, I don't know why, but they, their voice is, oh, It's uh, really important for us to follow the uh, instructions. Of the, uh, because if we don't do that, we don't get our ISO certification. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, I'm done. But Woo! before I leave, guys, Oh, no, oh, Just no, one oh, question, no. one question. Sure. Why did the Abang wear a tuxedo on his way to his vasectomy operation? Anybody know? Okay, here's the answer. The Abang said, because if you're going to be important, you might as well look important. Lah. <laughs> Thank you very much, everyone.